Happy Tuesday night, everyone. It is October 20th, 2020. And thank you for joining me here for Almost Live Stamping with Charlene. Tonight, we are gonna be using the Snowman Season stamp set and make this fun spinner card. Notice there how this little insert spins around. It is adorable and I cannot wait to show you how to make it. I just want you to keep in mind that as long as you do each card that I make or project that I make step by step, everything is easy. Uh, nothing, it might look really difficult, but if you just take it slow, step by step, you can make anything that I can make. I want you to stay until the very end of the video because I'm gonna show you two additional cards that I made using the same designer series paper and stamp set, plus one other little fun treat that I made. So. Thanks again for joining me and let's get started. I'm using the Snowman Season stamp set, which is just so darn cute. You know, I'm normally not a cutesy stamp set person, but I just love this little snowman dancing around. He is just so cute. And look at this one here. And then this one, uh, you can use the coordinating snowman builder punch to punch out the snowman, the hat, there's a little nose, and then his little arms. And you can just build your own snowman. I'm not gonna sing the song, I'm not breaking out in song. Um, and then we have the Let It Snow, two from Merry Christmas and Hoping This Season Builds Heartwarming Memories. So this is just, this is out of character for me to make cute cards with cute stamps. But, look, 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 it's a spinner card. So if you could see what I was going for here, we go from like the snowman is up and dancing and then he's like really dancing and laughing and having a great time. So it spins around on a tiny piece of ribbon, uh, a really thin piece of ribbon. So this, and this ribbon is from the Flowers for Every Season ribbon combo pack, but we will get to that in a minute. So let me show you how we start building the card. Remember, if we go step by step, it's not intimidating and every card is easy if you take it one step at a time. I am using Pacific Point as my base and I'm using the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. So this is just a regular, size card base and then I cut the designer series paper to four by five and a quarter. And then from the stitched shapes framelits dies, you want to take the largest circle and just place it on there. Um, if you'll see on the card, my sample here, it's not in the center. It's about, um, Let's say it's like one third, like that's the first, no, this is the first two thirds of the card and then this is the last one third. So I put it up there. On the, I put it on the first um, two thirds part of the card and ran it through my die cut machine. So you wanna go ahead and do that. And after you do that, you will come out with this. So now here is one tricky part. One thing that you wanna make sure you wanna do because you also have to cut the same size out of your card base. So you see the hole is cut from the designer series paper and the card base. Well, you wanna make sure that they're in the same spot. You want, you know, like you want your, the holes that you cut out to line up. So all you have to do is open up your card base and just put the designer series paper down on there. Take the same die, cause you want it to be the same size. And it'll kind of, because it has these little, um, you know, it has the little stitched markings on there and then the actual die um, cutting thing itself, it'll kind of, you can kind of feel it like hook on to the hole that you cut on the designer series paper. So, set it up like this and then put it on your cutting plates and run it through your die cut machine. And that's how you will have the circle in line in the same spot. 
So after you run that through your die cut machine, you're gonna be left with your card base that has the circle in it, your designer series paper that has the circle in it, and then you'll have this beautiful piece of designer series paper that has the uh, stitching on it. So this you can set aside and use for another project. And this piece here you can also set aside and use for another project. While you have your die cut machine out and ready to go and you have your stitch nested circle, the largest um, shape, I want you to take a piece of coordinating cardstock. So I'm gonna use here, this is a purple posy, and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out a circle from here because this I'm going to use on the inside of the card so that when the card is closed, you can see a contrast in the background from the little spinny thing. So you're not just, um, you know, it just gives it another dimension. So while you have your machine out, just go ahead and cut another circle. So that's like I did here. So now you will end up with these two pieces that you're gonna set aside for another project. Your cut card base, your designer series paper, and then an additional, um, stitched circle the same size as these. Now we don't want to adhere anything yet. We can go ahead and set these aside and then take two pieces of, you want to use your thick Whisper White cardstock because we are going to be using our Stampin' Blends to color in the snowmen. So, um, and the, the um, because those are alcohol-based markers, we always want to use our thick Whisper White cardstock because it just absorbs the ink from the markers so much better. So we want to stamp with our uh, Memento ink. We want to stamp this snowman and then the one that is just like having a good old time and throwing snowballs in the air and just laughing like crazy. And then take the next size of your stitched circle die, the, the, um, yeah, the next size of the stitched circle die, and you want to, it's, now the image is not gonna fit in there, the image is bigger than the die. So just center it so that you can get like, I did it so I could get his little hat in there and part of the tree and then part of the left side. And then on this one, um, I just centered it so that there's, um, you can see I left some snow on the bottom and then you can see the little snow piles on either side of it. And you want to run this through your die cut machine. And this is what you will have after you do that. You will have the smaller sized circle. So this is the second largest circle um, from the stitch circle framelit dies. And you want to um, then take these and take your Stampin' Blends and we will start coloring these in. And if you just look at my guy here, I wanna show you how I did the snow and the background. For the background to make it look like the sky, I used the light balmy blue Stampin' Blend and then I just, um, on the white area around the snowman, I just, I didn't, you know, I just randomly colored it in. I didn't make it perfect because I just think that it looks uh, more realistic. Just the, I don't wanna say sloppy, but just find the areas and kind of just paint along like that. So that I use light balmy blue. Let me just zoom in a little bit more so you could see the colors better. And then for the bottom, now none of this makes logical sense, except for the sky, I guess. I use light pool party for the bottom for the snow and for that little, the little piles of snow there for that little tree. So this is light pool party. 
And then I also use the light pool party while we have it out. I used it on the top of his hat and I used it on every other, I think I did the thin ones, every other line on his hat and on his scarf. So that's light pool party. And then for his nose and his buttons, I used the light Knight of Navy. So I've never seen a snowman with blue buttons or a blue nose, but that's okay because it looks so pretty. And then what I did was if you see here that the snowman has like these kind of like little lines on him, I just also colored those little lines with the light Knight of Navy and his little cheeks, so cute. Then I took my light Highland Heather and I did the other part of the hat and the scarf. I like to use the brush side, but you could also, since these are tiny little parts, you could use the, the um, pointed side too, if you want, either way. And I think that I use it, yeah, that's all there is to coloring them in. So now we will do the fun part and I'm gonna teach you how to attach them to the string and to the card and all that. So now to get to the fun part of the card where we actually create the little spinner situation, you're gonna need your designer series paper that you cut out, both of your little snowman circles, some regular adhesive, some tear and tape adhesive. I'm using my silicone mat so I don't get any adhesive on my work surface. And then this is one of the ribbons that's in the flowers for every season ribbon combo pack. You'll see that it's really thin. You'll also see that I need to fix my manicure. Sorry about that. Um, so you can use, if you have thin baker's twine uh, or if you have, some people have even used dental floss I thought this was perfect. It coordinates with the designer series paper because um, the Snowflake Splendor designer series paper because this ribbon has silver, white, and um, blue all threaded together. So it's just a great combination. So the way to do this is I want this snowman to be facing up and I want this one to be on the back. So we're gonna start with going to work backwards. We're working with the one that you want that you don't want to see right away. So take your designer series paper and flip it over and then take your snowman and flip him over and then you want to make sure I'm using the light which you can't see what I'm doing but whatever technique you need to use to uh, make sure that he is whoops sent you know that he's straight so that when you put him on there his body, his little body is straight. And center it over your designer series paper. And then um, if you see here like the edge, the end of my ribbon is fraying a little bit. So I am going to just snip that off because I want to start fresh. And I'm taking a piece of tear and tape adhesive and I am going to put it down. I'm gonna put one piece right there and I'm gonna put another piece down here and you will see how, how easy this is. So now let's peel this up and peel this up. Whoops. Okay, it's okay that I move the paper because I know my snowman is straight. So now we'll take our, let me zoom in. Take one end of the string stick it there on our tear and tape adhesive and then just pull it a little taut, not too much. You don't want it to be loose, but you don't want it to be too tight either. And then stick it down on the bottom like that. Snip, snip, come on, come on. Okay, so now, We'll leave it straight there like that. 
Now what we can do is put some adhesive, let's put our adhesive on our other snowman. We can zoom back out again. Okay, some adhesive on this one and we'll make sure that we can get it as straight as we can with him going up and down and we're just gonna put it on top of the circle that we already have. So now because we did it backwards, I can't explain the physics of this, but if you flip it this way, it'll spin because it's got, you know what I mean. Just like, just do it that way and it'll work. I don't know why, but that's how it spins. Um, is that a scientific reason? No, but you flip it over and that's what you have. Um, okay, so now we can just finish building our card. It's that that easy. I sure hope, if I, if I confused anybody with that step, just, send me an email um, and let me know, but it works. So if it works, let's just go for it. But do you see how it, because I did it that way, it, it spins easier. So now we can just get back to the easy part where I can actually find the words that I wanna use. And I'm just gonna put some of my um, Stamp and Seal Plus. I, you don't need much. This stuff is really strong. I'm gonna put some on there, I'm gonna do it backwards, and then I will place my cute little snowman spinner on top and make sure that I have the hole covered so it's nice and straight like that. So you see when you open it, then it spins. Okay, Whew. now we wanna take the to and from stamp, which is from the Snowman Season stamp set, and we're gonna take the other circle that we cut out in the contrasting cardstock color. And I'm just gonna stamp the to and from. Put a little bit of Stamp and Seal Plus on there. And then I am just going to try my best to make sure that I have the lettering straight and then place it right underneath the snowman, just like that. So when you open it up, the little guy spins around. Oh, how cute is it? So now to finish it off, let's just take the Merry Christmas stamp. And I'm gonna just ink that up and I'm still gonna use my Memento ink because I think it'll bring out the black in the ink that I used on the snowman. And I wanna use my paper piecing piercing mat for that because I am using a photopolymer stamp, so I need the resistance from the bottom to get a crisp image. Then I'll layer it on a piece of Bonnie Blue I would love to give an award to whoever it was at Stampin' Up that decided to put these colors together because they are just, they're one of my favorite color combinations ever. I never would have thought to put them together. Uh, okay, so we'll put our little Merry Christmas on there. And then I will get my blue adhesive back gems and finish it off with some fun bling. I'll just put one up there and then one down over here. How easy was that little spinner card with that cute little snowman? So now let me show you the other projects that I made with the same stamp set and designer series paper. This is the first one where I, it's basically the same thing, but I didn't cut it out and make it a spinner card. I just cut out the circle, um, which you don't even have to do, but I needed a piece of this for another project. So you can just take 
your scrap if you want from the uh, spinner card that you made and just put it right over top and then put another snowman die on there. And on this one I put let it snow and some more um, blue gems. And then what I did here was I put some here as um, on the little snowballs. But then for this I thought, how can I make a broom? Okay, this doesn't look anything like a broom, but I just took some of the blue ribbon that is in the Playing With Patterns ribbon pack and it doesn't look blue in the picture for some reason. I just cut four little pieces and then I took a piece, a tiny piece of braided linen thread and tied the four pieces together and then I frayed the ends and then I just stuck it here by his hand. Is it a broom? No. Does it add dimension and interest to the card? Yes, and that's really what my goal was. Then the next one, I love this one. I used the snowman builder punch for this. So I stamped the snowman onto the thick Whisper White cardstock. I didn't punch out the snowman, but if you can see, I did, I punched out his little nose and then I just used the balmy blue Stampin' Blend to color that in. I put little gems down his belly for his buttons. The punch punches out the arms. So I punched out his arms. I, there's a stamp. There's an arm stamp and there's a hat stamp. So I punched out his little arms with the punch and his little hat and then the little nose. Um, there is no nose stamp, but it does punch. Whew, a lot of things to remember. Um, so I put his two little arms there and they, what I did was I took a mini glue dot and I just rolled it in my fingers and I stuck it underneath and that's how I put the arms on. So you can't really tell in the camera, but the arms are sticking up a little bit. And then for the nose, I did the same thing. So the nose looks 3D, it's sticking up. And then for the hat, I used the Stampin' Dimensional and I just used the Stampin' Blends to color that in. So that is my third card. So we have the spinner card. Let's get rid of this so we can just see the cards better. We have the spinner card and then we have our snowman. Oh, the most important part is the little scarf. Ah. This is the braided linen thread and I just use my uh, paper snips and I just carefully made little slits on either side of the snowman's neck and then I threaded the ribbon through and I tied it twice and then I frayed the ends to make it look like his little scarf. And then we have this one here with the broom. And then I had another little snowman left over. So I just took a little cello bag and some of the pool party ribbon from the Playing With Patterns ribbon pack. And I just, um, this is just our regular linen thread. I poked a little hole in the top and I just added the snowman to that. And on the back is the to and the from. So all these different projects and there are many more, uh, but I didn't want to take up your entire Tuesday night. So this is, uh, it's really, really, really fun. And once you get going, you can just keep going and going and make project after project. One thing that I forgot to add while I was making the cart is to be sure to add your ribbon on the side. This is the Snowflake Seasons ribbon, which is iridescent and it really makes the little um, blue gems pop. It really gives it a great flair. So one last look at the cards from tonight. How fun are they? And you know why I love this snowman set is because why can't we send these in like, you know, February. I mean, I know where I live in South Florida, it never snows, but wouldn't it be fun, um, you know, to still get a nice card in the mail after the holidays? That would be great. So you don't have to be limited to just Christmas or Hanukkah or any other um, of the December holidays. You can use this stamp set into the new year. So thanks again for watching. All of the supplies are listed below. I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you can receive an alert whenever I post a new video. Click the thumbs up button and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Also, I've been meaning to mention that I have added gift certificates to my website, stampinwithcharlene.com. So since the holidays are coming up, 
If you would like to give a gift certificate to someone or receive a gift certificate, go on there. On the top bar, you'll see a menu item that says gift certificates. Just click on that and there are different denominations that you can give. It is a different process than it would be ordering from my online store. The recipient of the gift certificate would have to just email me their order and I would place the order for them. But it's very easy. If you have any questions, you can call me or send me an email. So I just wanted to put that out there right before the holidays. Gift certificates are available for Stampin' Up! from StampinWithCharlene.com. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.